Warren, Warren. I think it's interesting because Warren, she's been sliding in the polls because she has no spine. She was for Medicare for all. She said, I'm with Bernie. Then she started free falling all over the place. Uh, and as she moonwalked away from Medicare for all, her poll numbers went down. And then the media tried to make it seem like, no, she's going down because she was for Medicare for all. Mm-hmm. Then how was she the front runner? She moved to front runner status at one point being for Medicare for all. Right. If Medicare for all is so toxic, why is Bernie moving up? So Warren uh, went after Pete during the debate. We talked about that, the mm-hmm. wine cave stuff. And Pete came back like, well, you can't, you know, these these purity tests, you can't pass. I mean, Pete's obviously full of shit, so putting that aside. But he's right. She can't pass it. I mean, this came out soon after. Uh, this is from the Associated Press. Warren's souvenir wine bottle pops up in the big donor debate. Oh, boy. On Saturday, on a Saturday evening in June 2018, with temperatures in the 70s and the Red Sox playing at Fenway Park, supporters of Senator Elizabeth Warren gathered at the City Winery, Boston, for a fundraiser. They were treated to songs by the Grammy-winning artist Melissa Etheridge and heard remarks from Warren, who was months away from announcing her campaign for the 2020 Democratic nomination for top donors, those who could, con- those who could contribute or raise 5400 per couple, or 2,700 a person. There was a VIP photo reception and premium seating. So much so, <laughs> so much for not selling access. Uh, for them and others who gave at least 1,000, there was a gift, a souvenir wine bottle. Mm. Uh, and then they go into what Warren said. Billionaires in wide caves should not pick the president of the United States. Um, as, as a White House contender, Warren has made a conversation to spurn big dollar donor events like the one in Boston. It's an effort to burnish her appeal as a can't be bought candidate with deep uh, with deep grassroots support. But some see her tra- transition from a prolific force on the donor circuit to a presidential hopeful who has tried to curb others from doing much of the same, less than noble. Quote, challenge Pete on everything from his age and experience to his record in South Bend. Yes, can somebody challenge him on his record of gentrification and <laughs> demolishing black and brown neighborhoods? Uh, said Ruffus Gifford, I can't believe that's a name, uh, former finance director for Obama's campaign. I think it's I, Rufus. Oh, I think <laughs> I think that's totally fair, but this, this is just disingenuous. It implies a level of corruption and cronyism that is inaccurate and ultimately plays into the hands of Republicans. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Past Warren donors say she was, enga- she was an engaging presence at those events, asking questions of her wealthy patrons and listening intently mm-hmm. to what they had to say. She also made it personal. She bestowed awards on those who were successful at tapping their personal networks to raise money for her. Those who bundled large amounts under 50000 for her Senate campaign earned a silver pin, while those who brought in more were awarded a gold one engraved with her signature. A gold pin? <laughs> her campaign says it's a practice she discontinued. In 2012. That's not true. Oh, my God. As Warren considered a White House run, she held a series of small meetings at her home to court top Boston area donors who raised large sums for Hillary Clinton and to gouge their interest in supporting her potential bid. uh, Quote, when we made the decision to run the campaign this way, the players in the usual money for influence game dismissed it as naive, Warren spokesperson uh, said. We're pleased to we're pleased that our 100 percent grassroots strategy has been so effective that they're now threatened enough to be attacking us for it. Even after the pledge not to hold private fundraisers, Warren has continued to attend the very kind of events for which she criticized others. She has headlined fundraisers for the DNC in settings that raise handsome sums. And she said she would continue to do so if she were the nominee so that Democrats would be not be in the financial disadvantage against Trump. Those kinds of events are at odds with her self-proclaimed image of a candidate who would rather be taken down to earth selfies with supporters who send her campaign five bucks, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Alex Ritchie, who donated more than 20000 to Warren, said she had co-hosted events and attended others. Quote, many of the events for her that I went to were on the Cape, Ooh. Where, where Barack Obama just bought a, I don't remember the amount, nice. but it was insane amount of money for his and Michelle's home in Martha's <laughs> Vineyard. <laughs> They would have wine and some kind of finger food. It's pretty standard. It wasn't any different from what other people do. She raised money the way every other candidate does. Warren also attended fundraisers on Manhattan's Upper East Side and in Greenwich Village and at a mansion in Santa Monica, California. The events brought in hundreds of thousands of dollars for Senate campaigns and other Democratic caucuses. So, I mean, 
you kind of get the point. I don't need to read the whole thing. But what I think is really interesting here, put aside the fundraiser she's done, which is problematic. Yeah. They keep pushing this thing that she's 100% grassroots. Right. And she's funded her campaign 100% grassroots. Oh, there's the article if you want it. (laughs) But she's not 100% grassroots. Basically, she did an accounting trick where she did the same fundraisers, maybe not in a wine cave, but Martha's Vineyard, D.C., mansions in California. And she took $10 million that she had raised and just transferred it to her presidential campaign. So technically, maybe it wasn't after she announced her presidency, but she used funds from that private wealthy fundraisers Mm -hmm. to start her presidential campaign. So like... Her campaign is trying to have it both ways, but the truth is she did benefit from wealthy donors in her presidential campaign. Now, does it mean she's Lucifer? No. Does it disqualify her? I don't think so. But it's not genuine. Am I wrong? No, you're right. By the way, Pete is Lucifer. But Uh, I think, you know, people try to compare the, the transfer thing uh, and say, well, Bernie transferred money too. The point is Bernie never took corporate donations. He's never held a fancy wine cave, $900 bottle of wine fundraiser. In fairness, I, I want to be accurate. Bernie did at one point do fundraisers for the DNC as a senator. That's separate. No, no, but I'm saying like, no, no, but I'm saying Bernie. And he's going to have to do that now because he signed the pledge. Right. But what I'm saying is Bernie in his existence has done a fundraiser or two where wealthy donors give money to the DNC. So it's not like Bernie. It's totally different. No, I know. But I'm just saying like, he. it's not that he's never done a fundraiser. It just didn't go to him. Right. Right. That's the difference. Yeah. It's just to be clear, like it's it's Bernie has not done those things. Warren has. I agree admire that she took the pledge not to during the presidential run. She still transferred the funds, still corrupt money. There's still that influence. There's a reason that uh, Wall Street is not, in fact, scared of Warren, despite the PR campaign attempt to make it seem that way. Right. And to me, like, listen, let's be clear. So Pete Buttigieg going into a wine cave with 150 crystals as a chandelier and, oh, excuse me, they corrected it. It wasn't $900. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a $900 bottle of wine. It was a $175 yeah, so bottle of wine. Yeah, so we should talk about that a little bit. So they had at the Washington Post. Wait a minute. Post, the Washington right? Post is coming to Pete Buttigieg's defense. The media oh, yeah. is coming to Pete Buttigieg's defense defending the wine club. It's not. <laughs> no, they don't want to talk about Black Lives Matter. Wine caves matter. They had one of the attendees write this. Right. About Pete Buttigieg wine cave dinner. I was there. Ugh. And it's just this sprawling, ridiculous piece <laughs> by somebody uh, who was there. And, of course, the Washington Post is coming to defend Pete Buttigieg's honor it's in the wine cave. And Jane Lynch as well. Like all these wealthy people. And Clara Jeffrey of Mother Jones of all magazines was like, no, it, wine caves are totally normal. It's fine. And what by are the you way, guys talking and, and about? And by the way, by the way. <laughs> Do you know who's coming out to endorse Pete Buttigieg? Costner, right? Kevin <laughs> Costner. I think that the problem with Warren is she decided somewhere along the line to put calculation before conviction. Yes. And when you put calculation before conviction, especially in this age of the outsider, Bernie Sanders even though it was bullshit Trump. People see that. And I think people are seeing that there's there's always seems to be a contradiction when it comes to Elizabeth Warren. There always seems to be a, um, yeah, uh, something that she's saying, she's trying to present herself as this anti-corruption warrior, but like, I just told she's you. She's just not. She's done all of these things. And there's been reports in the past that, oh, she wealthy donors said, yeah, she talks quite differently in private to us than she does on the stump. Well, isn't that kind of like Hillary's, I got a yeah. private 
and yes, versus a, a public, and position. public position, of course. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statusquo.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.